Hi YouTubers, this is another video from your friendly neighborhood reviewer, Evelyn. Today we're going to be reviewing another K-drama series called My Liberation Notes. It's currently streaming on Netflix. I was holding off from watching this series, but Instagram, as handy as it could be, went and showed me important scenes which piqued my interest. So the series is about the idea of when having an ordinary life is not enough. The series centers around three siblings. So there's two women and a guy within the siblings. They live in the countryside with their father and mother, as where the siblings commute to Seoul for their work, as they live outside in the countryside. The father works making custom furniture, while the mother does the farming. The mystery we have is there's the stranger working with the sibling's father, he's only known as Mr. Good. We found out that one day he appeared out of nowhere and decided to pay rent, one year's worth of rent up front to live in a house that's opposite the siblings. So I'm not going to describe about the other stories with the other two siblings, the oldest one and the and the middle and the middle child, which is the guy, so they have their own issues going around. The important part of the series is between the younger sibling, Yong Mi Jong, played by Kim Ji Won, and Mr. Gu, played by Son So Ku. So Yong Mi Jong, she's having it tough. She had went through a bad breakup, and you know how it is when you get emotionally manipulated to lend money to your boyfriend. Well, this is the case that what happens to her. She ends up giving money to her boyfriend, but he ends up running off to get married with somebody else, and she's left with the aftermath. And we learned that she has a history of boyfriends cheating her like crap and frankly she's had enough. And then we got then we see Mr. Go. He's working diligently with Yong Min Jung's father, but we find out that he has a severe drinking problem. But even though he has a severe drinking problem, he never lets go of his obligations and he still has a laser focus, a laser focused vision towards what he does. But then again, he doesn't care, he's just there drinking endlessly the days we in the countryside and we have no idea why, the reason. The main important part in which the main two characters, which I find the main two characters of Yong Mi Jung and Mr. Gu, she goes and surprises Mr. Gu by telling her the word, telling him the words. She goes and says, why are you drinking so much? And Mr. Gu says, I have nothing else to do, so, you know, what else can I do but drink? But obviously we know that there's other other reasons why he's you know drinking heavily and he even admits that he's an alcoholic. So Yong Mi Jung, in despite of frustration, she goes and tells him direct <coughs> directly that, that she's gonna give him something to do. That she tells him, I want you to worship me, which leaves Mr. Good really stunned because of course, what, what's the implication of the meaning worship? What exactly does she mean by worship? Does she does she want any a sexual intimacy, sexual contact, does she want to be treated nice? So he's left stunned and he's left to figure out, you know, to look up the word what exactly worship means. But we see that he goes and brushes her off because of course he doesn't want added complications to his situation. So for each episode, we see Yong Mi Jung really going into Mr. Gu's life, like just needling away at the barriers that he's holding and at some part he relents and then he says do you still want me to worship you and she says yeah and she goes and the, and the point about this series is i'm not going to describe every detail young min jun tells mr good that she doesn't want anything big she just wants him to make her whole again because of course with her fa failing relationships she just feels broken and she has a really you can say it's about two really severely depressed people coming together and trying to find meaning in their life, in the depression, and what's the meaning of waking up each day. And in particular, Mr. Gu's case, the mystery, there's the big mystery about where he came from. And we have an understanding that he may have a rough background. Yong Mi Jun doesn't care about any of that. She goes and tells Mr. Gu, I don't care if you drink. I'm not going to ask you to change. I'm not going to ask you about your name. And I'm not going to ask you where you came from. The only thing that I want to do is just have you there to worship me. And we can see that Mr. Gu finds this intriguing that a woman of that caliber goes and asks him such a really bizarre request. And he relents He's because the agreement comes out that like he's going to leave after the year, like when the when the summer ends, 
that you know she goes and makes an analogy that everything in the winter dies so it's kind of like that unsaid understanding that after the year that whatever happens that they'll part ways and when in each episode we find out that Mr. Gu eventually we find out that he was working as a boss in a bar and a part of a mafia we can understand probably like in those clubs where they do the shady you know underground gambling and something happened to him in which he just basically gave he ran away he basically had enough and he decided to live in the wealth of the countryside. As well, Young Mi Jun is there discovering herself. She's because she wants she says that she wants Mr. Gu to change her. And she kind of promised him him the same thing, which is the thing that makes him more intrigued that he thinks this woman can change me. Cause cause we kind of the character analysis of Mr. Gu, we kind of see that he knows he has awful habits. He feels disgusted with himself about about the way he acts, about his life, and he finds things pointless, and he finds life pointless. But Young Mi Jun comes in his life without judgment, without criticism, and actually is very similar to himself. That despite her working in a um, was it a credit card company design, designing cars, she has a very nihilistic view about everything since of her experience. The, I really love this series because it shows the imp the perfectness of the unimperfectness that the flaws, the little things are the most things that we can, you know, enjoy. And when we see that Mr. Goo goes through his drinking binges, that despite everything, Young Minju follows him everywhere. It's kind of like protecting him. And at the same time, they have these kind of like random conversations about life. When they, in this particular scene, when they're walking down the pathway to the house, Mr. Gu goes and tells Young Mi Jun to move aside, and she says, "Why?" And he says, "There's a dead bird on the floor." And then Young Mi Jun goes into a whole spiel about, you know, why do animals die with their bellies up? And she starts talking about when she was a child, seeing like dead frogs being crushed by cars and the sound it would make. Mr. Gu, it does. It's. I hopefully I'll be able to put this little clip here. Starts like you can see his facial expressions changing about like such a young like such an attractive young woman starts talking about animals in such a gra graphic description and we can see that kind of like he he kind of you, Kim, young mi jun makes mr Gu feel a little bit more alive and we can kind of see that mr Gu feels more and more attracted to her so the intersectional part of the series is when mr Gu runs into his the gang members and then we find out that he was outed by this other gang member that became that took over his job and he talks with the gang member and then we found out what really happened to him to cause him to really shut down it was inferred nothing in great detail that the gang member's sister was in a relationship with mr Gu, and apparently the sister was deeply depressed and mr Gu kind of dis describes that he was frustrated seeing her depression but the gang member kind of eggs him on saying that you probably wanted her dead and implies that maybe he murdered her. And this is the tipping point in which Mr. Gu kind of really had enough. And we don't know whether it was a suicide attempt, but he ends up being, you know, blacked out drunk and going to a field where there's wild animals. And he's there just drunk over, off his head. And we kind of assume he wanted the, he wanted the wild dogs to tear him apart but luckily young Mi Jun was there and she happens to scare him up scare the dogs away and they end up back in his place and young Mi Jun confronts Mr. Gu and says what do you think is easier having your limbs torn off having your nose busted or having a cute relationship with a girl and living a, a romantic life she confronts him and making to look at so Young Min Ju really does make Mr. Gu wake up even though he's like really blacked out drunk. Cause the prior to that, Mr. Gu goes and tells Young Min Ju in a kind of not specific, just a really superficial layer about what happened to his last girlfriend. He doesn't even refer to this girl as his girlfriend. I don't know whether the tr translation was wrong, says the girl he used to live with. He told the girl that he was living with that killing yourself that is not the answer. He gives the he gives the scenario in which 
he saw her on the TV about people that jumped off a cliff and they talk about when they go down and they survive and when they, if they do survive they talk about going down all those thoughts and feelings they had about wanting to die just goes out the window and he thought that the girl he was living with would understand that but unfortunately she didn't she just jumped we didn't know the specifics and we realized in that moment that Mr. Gu was trying to cut off all ties and then that led to him, I guess, was a suicide attempt by animal. But Yong Min Jun stops him and confronts him. But then after that, Mr. Gu finally realized he has to go back to his previous life and he leaves Yong Min Jun. But Yong Min Jun doesn't get angry, she just gets sad and she says that she understands about it. But Mr. Zugu is kind of like telling her, aren't you angry at all? And she's like, no, I'm just sad. Maybe I'll get angry later. And then they part ways. In the last half end of the series, we see Mr. Zugu's life and him kind of devolving a little bit. And then we see his life as a, the manager of the, of the club or the boss of the club. But there's a high, higher boss, the chairman. And we see the relationship with the chairman in here. And we see the chairman, despite him looking tough, does have a soft spot for Mr. Gu, because despite his drinking, he's always had laser sharp focus and he gets the job done. So the chairman confronts Mr. Gu about his drinking, but Mr. Gu tries to avoid the conversation. We, Mr. Gu ends up, ends up realizing that he misses Yong Mi Jun. And then we have an incredible scene where, with him not wanting to, tears are coming up. And then after that, he tries phoning her, but he finds out the number is disengaged and he ends up going back to the countryside, in which unfortunately he ends up finding out that Yong Min Jun's mother had died. And then the father keeps on starts explaining the whole thing. And the father here is another silent character. The father here of Yong Jae Ho is another quiet guy, similar to Mr. Gu. And we can see that they, the reason why they worked so together, worked well so together, both of them had similar personalities. And he saw them. Young Min Jun was good for Mr. Gu, and he, for some reason, he, you know, despite having the sense to know that Mr. Gu was coming from a rough background, potentially dangerous, he knew that Mr. Gu would protect Young Min Jun, and go, and he goes and gives Mr. Gu Young Min Jun's telephone number, and that's when they meet. And the last two episodes is really beautiful. When Yong Min Jun and Mr. Gu meet again, both of them are changed in, in different ways. Mr. Gu seems a little bit more lighter, a little more cheerful, well not that cheerful, and he's almost ready to confront his demons a little bit, but not so much. And then we see Yong Min Jun as well changed, much more resilient, much more independent. And there's another really cool scene in which Yong Min Jun tells Mr. Gu, that to find five minutes in your life to collect in which you can enjoy things, be happy. Because Young Miju kind of sees Mr. Gu's real life and she ends up finding that Mr. Gu's full name is Ku Ja Kyung. Hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. And she does see some of the effects of his of his life, but she doesn't care anyway. And they end up going back to his apartment. And we see a bit more levels of intimacy that Mr. Gu is letting his barriers down and he ultimately wants to pursue some sort of relationship with Young Min Jun. The ending of this series is very open-ended. The only thing we know that Mr. Gu and Young Min Jun realize that they both changed each other at the end and that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And the key message of this series is, despite how hard life is, is about taking one step at a time. And what I really loved about this series is the realness, the real dialogue. I could identify with Mr. Gu 100% about stuff. Unfortunately, the other siblings, I just I couldn't get into it in any shape or form. <laughs> you guys let me know about the siblings. Is it worth concentrating on that? Because I'm usually just fast forward in those bits. Because the real story here is about how two broken people come together to fit into a perfect jigsaw in a way that they understand each other that they don't really have so much expectations, that they accept every sort of flaw that each other have, but at the same time they don't let it pass. They offer an alternative solution of what probably could help each other. So this is the end of the video. To all these new viewers that might see this video come to the end, I just want to say a big thank you for watching and I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, and leave, me, and leave me your thoughts about the series, if you like the series. As I leave you always, bye!